Hi everyone, welcome back to Art by Mark. This is part two of our How to Dutch Pour um, tutorial. So we have our paints now nicely mixed here. You wanna make sure that you get any final stirs. Sometimes I just like to just make sure it's still at the consistency that I like. So you have all your paints here, checking them out. And now the next things that you're going to need are one, your canvas. Uh, I also do things on plywood. You don't necessarily need to do canvases. These are really nice because you could get these for cheap at Michael's or Blick or any of your other local art studios. So go ahead and take that safety plastic off and the silicone that keeps them fresh. I don't know how, but. So the next thing that you're going to need, at least that I like, is I have these, maybe I'm just into things that are jumbo, but I have these jumbo push pins. Another thing that was recommended to me when I first started my acrylic pour, um, they, these are really awesome because they go right into the corner of your canvas like that, and then it doesn't go through, which is also a good plus. Um, and basically these make it so, not so much for the Dutch pour, well, also for the Dutch pour, but when you get to open cup pouring, then you can tilt your canvas um, and slide your hands underneath without actually having to touch the sides and get paint all over you and or mess up the paint of your painting. So these are really nice. They come in handy also. So I have multiple tables. Um, I just moved over from my <laughs> paint mixing table to my actual painting table so that I can uh, easily shoot this video. But I end up picking them up off of this table and putting them over here to dry. I also have this rack over here, which I got on Amazon for, I think, like 30 bucks. It's for drying coats, um, but I have been using it to dry my paints. So I, I think that's better. It's also cheaper than a lot of the metal brands out there. So um, I would definitely look into that. So once you get your canvases prepped, I end up doing a couple of these so I don't have to do it with painting hands. Um, when I move on to the next paintings. So you have your canvas set up, you have your paints ready. Another thing that comes in handy is a blow, a blow torch. Um, I also like using a heat gun. Um, this one's not that expensive. I think this also was like about 40, 50 bucks. Um, honestly, at the end of the day, just use a heat torch um, because it's you, you can find these for nothing, 10, 15 bucks at at a grocery store, at a cooking store, um, online, on Amazon, um, and they work great. One recommendation is be careful with it because it is an open flame. Uh, the thing with that is you can easily burn your paints. I had to learn that in my uh, first lessons of doing acrylic pour, so don't burn your paint, especially, you know, you've just worked hard, and one of the big things is is that so that's also something that you're going to need um, a palette knife occasionally comes in handy so it's not a necessity but every once in a while something gets into your painting um, I have dogs at least one so every once in a while you find a good Nala hair in your painting and this is how you make sure that uh, it doesn't stay there for maybe your potential seller or buyer um, and you know hey it keeps your paintings fresh so that's a good thing. And main thing for the Dutch pour style is your blow dryer. Um, obviously this has seen a lot of love. Um, it is not plugged in right now, um, but these are great. This was only like 15 bucks on Amazon. Look how much paint. It's basically a, a work of art itself. And it has, uh, has gone through the dawn of time. So uh, you definitely need a blow dryer. Um, straws come in handy as well if you want some like final touches like just a, maybe a little bit more explosion of your paint into another uh, area one of the things with that is bendy straws who would have thought they come in handy because you know obviously you can angle it a lot better which is nice so there's there's tons of different tools but those are basically the basics of doing Dutch pour you have your paint you have your canvas preferably something to lift up your canvas. And another just easy thing, if you don't wanna buy extra, you have these Dixie cups, you can use those and put those on the corners of your canvases or your plywood or board or whatever you're painting on. And it makes it so that you can 
prop it up and have that same effect. So don't feel like you have to go out and buy anything. I think those jumbo push pins, you get about 20 of them for like four or five bucks. So they're really not that expensive. But you know, I like these little tiny hacks in life that you end up finding what works for you. And you know, that's just, once you find out what works, why go anything else? So you have your blow torch or your heat gun, you have your palette knife, your blow dryer, your canvas, and you're ready to go. So let's paint. All right, so first things first, I like to take my giant white paint because I got it in this big bucket and I like to pour it in little tiny cups because that just makes it a lot easier. So go ahead and mix that in there. And then you're going to coat for Dutch pour basically the whole canvas in whatever color base you want to use. And it does take a lot of paint, so I apologize if it feels like a mess or a waste. It's really not. You're going to use all of the paint, and at the end it's really nice just to have something to uh, cover the canvas, because I'd rather have paint covering the canvas than just having bare canvas, which I've done in the past. So this is exactly what you need. And to spread the paint really easily, yeah, that's right, use your handy dandy blow dryer. And kind of guide the paint as much as you can in the areas that you need, which is everything. Um, <laughs> uh, waste as little as possible because you're actually going to use more white paint in the end. So you're going to want to try to push the paint towards the middle once you're done so that you can use that paint. I'm also a big fan of having paint on my borders. When I'm done with my paint, I'll end up going through and just kind of using my finger to make sure there's white paint or any color paint on the sides also so that you don't have any of that grainy canvas looking. Another main thing, you'll see that I'm holding up the cord a lot. Be conscientious of your cord, unless there's fancy cordless blow dryers out there. The last thing you want to do is drag your cord across your nice new artwork. Uh, you have no idea how many times I've either done that or looked to see if my paint has dried, rub my hands across it, and the paint wasn't dry yet. And you just get so upset, or at least I do. So, you know, little things that you end up learning as you go. Don't touch wet, wet, wet paint, obviously, right? It seems obvious, but you know you don't know if it's if it's wet, and you're excited that you know you just created this beautiful masterpiece. So you know, give yourself the due diligence, let it dry, hold your cord, do anything you can to avoid accidental mistakes.
All right. Once you have that, you can go ahead and do two, two things. Take your blowtorch or your heat gun, just kind of go across, especially if you use a hand mixer or anything like that. You're gonna see bubbles in your paint, and you don't want that. All right, and here's another reason why that palette knife comes in handy. I don't know what this is, but something got in my paint, and now it's white again. Beautiful. So, we have our four different colors that we've painted today or that we mixed today, the dark blue, the slightly light blue, the dark violet, that color is just so beautiful, and then the pink. So give them a nice final stir. Sometimes also the flow troll ends up uh, floating to the top and you just wanna make sure that everything's mixed in nice and perfectly. So now that you have your wonderful white painted canvas, you're ready to go. And this one's up to you. you uh, some people like to just dribble with the, with the jumbo stick across. Um, I like to bend my Dixie cups at one side and just kind of have a nice funnel. I also start off the canvas a little so that when I get to the canvas, it's pouring at the speed that I want. You can do something nice and thin like that. That violet goes a long way. So I definitely like to sometimes use a lot or a little. And there's no real technique on how to do the Dutch pour. You can do it like this. Um, I'll do stuff where I just do zigzags like that. Let's get, get some of this pink in there. And sometimes I do then opposite zigzags. Beautiful. And I feel like I need more of that violet. So let's get that violet in there. All right. So once you got your paints in there, which that looks pretty cool on its own. I wish sometimes that I just kept uh, that. And you don't have to be as, as proper, per se, as I am. Sometimes it's just nice to just flick your paints onto your canvas. I, I end up doing that from time to time, and the results are really cool. So don't feel like you have to do any sort of design. Um, the main thing is what's coming up now. So then you're going to take a little bit more white paint, and this is what you're going to use to just cover the paints. So you're going to pour a little on, on both sides of your design here. All right, and try not to cover it up already, but if you do a little bit, that's okay. So if you get that on both sides, you should have a nice thick paint. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our blow dryer and we're going to cover it. Beautiful. You can already start seeing a little bit of mixtures going in there, a little in the pink, a little in the blue. Um, one thing that I like to do now is just see if there are a little bit of bubbles. If you can see closely, maybe I can zoom in, uh, you'll see a little bit popping going on. Again, these heat guns and the blow torches are incredibly hot, and you don't want to bit, uh, you don't want to burn your paint, so don't hold it on too long. All right, and now we're going to spread the paint. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to remember where the you can see the lift and you can see the colors come through, but you're going to start in the middle and then push in one direction, and don't start from the beginning because you want to save paint to go in both directions. So here we go. Wow, that looks really cool. I see that violet comes out and it's amazing. Man, and I am
am a big fan of blank space. So I'm actually going to leave a lot of this just how it is because I love having the contrast of the white and the dark colors. Those are just such rich colors. That violet and that blue are amazing. And you have those subtle hints of pink that are coming through here as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, the blowtorch blow and or heat gun one more time. So that's it for the painting part of it. Now the last thing that I'll do is two things. You'll notice after you do this, there's a lot of dripping paint that's coming off of your canvas. And I just take my finger and I just kind of follow it. You can also do a paper towel. Um, while I'm doing this, I'm looking to see if there's any blank spots on the canvas, on the sides mostly, because you should have covered the top. But this will make it so that you can just make sure that your whole canvas is painted so that when you hang it up on your wall or your buyer hangs it up on their wall, there aren't any blank sides which are really not as attractive as the rest of your paint. And now once you have cleaned up your edges and got all those drips of paint that are coming off your canvas, your masterpiece is complete. Tell me what you think. Uh, send me a comment or a, a thumbs up, whatever. Um, how did your artwork turn out?